Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm doing a French country pot and topiary. For today's project, I'm using a pot and saucer that I got from Ikea. I've got the name there for you in case you want to grab this yourself. I picked this up on a recent trip there. I'll link that video up the top right hand corner. I'm then going to be using IOD's Swags Mold, particularly the design with the little bows and the florals and I'm just going to work my dust air dry clay into that design and using my thumbs I'm going to push that excess clay out. I'm then going to flex the mold and carefully start pulling the design out. I'm actually going to be adapting these molds, cutting them, changing them a little bit to suit the design I'm trying to achieve. So you can see here, I'm just casting the center element from this particular design and I'm then going to cut off the bow on the left hand side there because I want there to be two draping swag designs before each bow. So I'm just sort of trying to spread that out. You can see here what I'm sort of trying to achieve. I'm also going to be casting just the top bow section. I want that to sit in the center part where the two swags meet. I'm going to be using some Sealy's Quick Set Wood Glue on the back of each of my castings to stick to my pot. Once I have my main design down, I'm going to take that smaller bow casting that we made and that's going to sit in the center where those two swags meet. So now you're really starting to get an idea of what I am trying to achieve here. And I'm just going to continue to repeat that pattern around the pot until I am back around to the other side. You can see here that once I got back around to where I started that I was only able to do one swag design but that's okay that will just sit in the back section. I want my pot to have more of an aged textured look so I'm going to take some of Paint Couture's embossing medium and using a palette knife I'm going to start spreading it around the pot and it will create ridges and an uneven surface so it will definitely give this pot more of a worn handmade look. If I inspire you to try any of these Paint Couture products from today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link. I will put the link in the description and on the screen. I just get a little thank you from Paint Couture in return. Once I'm finished adding the embossing medium to the outside, I'm going to start adding it to the lip around the top of the pot. And I actually did switch to just using my finger to pull that medium around the top of the pot. And then after I'd finished doing that, I pulled it sort of on the inside a little bit because at this stage, I just thought I was doing a pot. My project did evolve a little bit later, as you will see. And then I'm also repeating the same steps on the little dish that sits underneath the pot. Once I finished adding the embossing medium, I let my project dry overnight. The next day, I came in with Dixie Belle's Chocolate Chalk Mineral Paint. I'm going to be painting the entire pot with this color. We are, again, thinking about layers here because we're going for a vintage look. So I'm thinking that I want this to be my base layer that's going to peek through some of the other layers that we're going to put on there. So I'm brushing it on, but then you see I do switch to creating a more raised look by dabbing and stippling that paint on. You could also add maybe some of Dixie Belle's Sea Spray to this or maybe some baking soda if you wanted to add even more texture but just doing this dabbing and stippling motion is definitely achieving the look that I want. When the chocolate chalk mineral paint was completely dry, I came in with Paint Couture's Extreme Guard in satin and I am going to seal that paint in. We're actually going to be using milk paint, so I want there to be a little bit of a resist so that when I apply the milk paint, I get some of that lovely crackle. Mm -hmm. 
Once my clear coat was dry, I took Fusion's Milk Paint in the color Oyster Bar. I'm going to measure out a cap full of my milk paint powder, and then I'm going to measure out an equal amount of water to go with it. I'm then going to stir it really well with my brush until all of that powder is dissolved. Next, I'm going to start applying our Oyster Bar Milk Paint over the top of our pot, and I am working that paint around. It's going to take two coats to get the look that I want, but I'm going to work my way around that pot. I don't mind if my brush skips over some of that lovely texture, and of course, what I'm going to do is once I have my outside of my pot completely covered, I am then going to be coming in with a heat gun to speed up that drying process, create a bit more texture, and that lovely crackle. I'm then coming in with my heat gun and I'm rotating that pot around so that I am first drying that paint evenly and then next you will see that we are starting to get some wonderful crackle happening and as I said I am going to do two coats of this to get more of an opaque finish. Once I'm finished painting the inside of the pot and the little dish, I will also be painting the bottom of each of these. So this is how our pot is looking so far. We've got some wonderful texture. Our milk paint is looking great with that crackle. And next I am going to take a wet wipe and I am going to go over the top of the details of our beautiful castings and bring back some of that chocolate underneath. Remember we have sealed that chocolate, so we're not gonna reactivate that, but milk paint can be reactivated with water. This is a look I've done many times before, but it is definitely one of my favorite techniques to get an authentically aged and chippy look. I'm also grabbing my mister sometimes to miss that paint to help pull back some of that paint and show that lovely chocolate underneath. So definitely think about layers if you are looking for a vintage weathered look. Next, I'm going to take some of Paint Couture's Bronze Luxe Metallic. I'm going to get a little bit on my finger and I'm going to go over the top of the beautiful castings that we added. I want this to look like faded gilding, so I'm not going in too heavy. I'm skipping certain sections and I just want a hint of that beautiful color. So like I said, it will look like faded gilding. To make this look more like it has sat in a garden for years, I'm going to take Verdigreen Glaze by Paint Couture and I am going to start adding that to my pot. So you can see I'm adding it with a brush and then I'm using a wet wipe to pat back the excess. So this will be something that you will do to your liking depending on how dark you want it to be. I tried to think of where the moss would appear naturally over time. So definitely around the bottom and in amongst some crevices and things where that moisture would build up. So I'm just going to continue working my way around the pot, adding it here and there. I don't want to go too crazy with this, but I do want this to look like a weathered pot that has been in a garden for a very long time. After adding it to the outside of the pot, I'm of course going to go in and add it around the edge of the pot and the little dish as well. Next, I'm going to take Dixie Belle's Clear Best Dang Wax and I'm going to seal my entire piece, including that dish. Milk paint needs to be sealed with a wax or a hemp oil so that you don't accidentally reactivate it. And then once I have the amount of wax on there that I want, I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to buff back the excess. So it was at this point that I thought that I wanted to add something else. You could definitely just leave it here. You'd have yourself a lovely, nice French style pot, 
but I wanted to add something on top. I wanted this to be a complete decor piece so that I didn't have to put any flowers or greenery in it. So I decided that I was going to make my own topiary to sit in the top of the pot. To do this, I'm going to be using IOD's Juliet Mould. I'm first dusting it with cornstarch. On the left-hand side there, you can see that I have a foam dome. I cut that up from a previous craft project. We're going to be using that as our base. I'm then going to take my dust air dry clay and you can see I'm sort of pulling it out in a flatter shape. The Juliet Mould is a very large continuous mould. You don't necessarily have to use it like that. A bit later, you'll see that I do break it up into pieces and, and use bits and pieces of it. But to start off, with I did want to cast the entire thing because we do have a little bit of surface area to cover so you can see I'm just piecing my clay together really working it in there using my thumbs against the micro rim to try and get a smooth edge and you can see here once I have it all cast together that it is quite a large design so it does take a little bit of time to really get that all filled you could use resin as well if you wanted so once I have all of that filled I'm going to go around and start flexing the edges to help it release from the mold itself and then once I've done that I did decide to actually flip it over the top of the foam dome itself so that I got a better idea of how it was going to cover so I'm just going to carefully pull the design out gravity's helping me a little bit here I am going to get a bit of breakage, but that's okay because we're going to actually be piecing some of the design together anyway. But here you can see how it's going to progress. So I'm going to cover the entire dome with these beautiful roses. I then took the roses off the dome shape and now I'm adding my Sealy's wood glue to the back of the entire thing. I'm going to use my finger to spread that glue around. You definitely want to be generous here to make sure that your castings are going to stay in place. And then I just took certain sections of the Juliet mold and started positioning it on there because I know I'm going to have to piece it together in a slightly different arrangement to get the whole piece covered. So you can see I'm just sort of working with the different pieces that I have there. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can use bits and pieces of this mold. There are so many lovely different sizes of roses and leaves. Just have a play until you are happy with how it looks. Once I have the entire dome covered, this is how it's looking so far. I'm going to add some hot glue around the rim of my pot so that I can secure that topiary design in place. To make the two pieces look a bit more seamless, I'm going to come in with some more pieces of clay and glue those in place in the underside where the pot meets the dome. I then let my clay dry overnight. So this is how our project is looking so far. I am loving the addition of that topiary. I'm then going to come in and add some more of that chocolate chalk mineral paint, just like we did with the pot. I'm going to go over the top of the entire topiary and of course the underside where it meets the pot as well. I just had to be a little bit more careful not to get any paint on our pot below because I do like how that looks and I don't really want to change it. Once that's dry, just like with our pot, I'm going to add some of that oyster bar milk paint and I'm going to go over the top of the entire topiary and obviously down the bottom with that paint. I did have to have a wet wipe handy because we did get a few drips going down on the pot, but because we have sealed that with wax, it was pretty easy to wipe back any of the spilt milk paint. Just like with the pot, I am going to be doing two coats and drying each of them in between with a heat gun to get some of that wonderful texture and crackle.
When my two coats of milk paint are dry, I'm going to take a wet wipe and I'm going to go over the top of the Juliet mold details and I'm going to wipe back some of that milk paint to bring some of that chocolate through. And this is really starting to look like aged stone. I'm really loving how this looks. It definitely has a vintage feel. So I'm just going to continue to make my way around that topiary until I have distressed it. I'm then going to be using some of Paint Couture's Ballet Slipper Luxe Metallic Paint and I'm just going to be putting it on top of the roses designs and then I'm going to take a wet wipe and dab back some of the excess. I really want this to look like paint that has faded over time from being outside but I do still want a little bit of a subtle shine. Once I'm finished adding that ballet slipper to each of the roses, I am going to let it dry and then come in with some more of that oyster bar. I'm going to layer that over the top so that, again, it just adds to that faded feel. And then I did grab a wet wipe again to pull that chocolate underneath back through, again, to make it look vintage and chippy. I then took some of Paint Couture's Verde Green Antiquing Glaze and just like we did on the pot, I'm going to add that in certain spots where I think that moss would naturally occur. And you can see I am wiping back some of that excess. To seal the top, I'm going to grab my Best Dang Wax again. I'm applying it with a brush and then wiping back the excess with a paper towel. I want this to look like it's come out of a garden, so I'm going to take some of Dixie Belle's Dixie Dirt in charcoal and I'm going to start applying it in places where I think dirt would accumulate and then I do come back and wipe back some of that with a paper towel. If you're going to try this, this will be to your liking how much you add. So I'm adding it into quite a few of the crevices, but then I'm also going over the top of some of the details like the leaves, for example, and then pulling that back. It's actually highlighting some of the details of those castings. It's really quite a nice effect. After finishing with the topiary section, I'm of course going to add some to our little base. And here's our finished French country pot with topiary. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I definitely think it looks like it's come out of a French country garden, perhaps a stone statue that has been there for years. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.